That's junk. Here's another really fun, really well made, and easily accessible Super Famicom game that never left Japan. This one titled Nangoku Shonen Papua-kun, and it was developed by Daft in 1994, who also had a hand in another sharp looking Super Famicom game, Hamelin Violin no Hiki. Both of those games were published by Enix, so I'm guessing Daft may have something to do with them. That, or they're just a couple of punks. I think it's actually Enix, since they were also the publishers of the manga that this game is based off of, and yeah, I should also mention that there's a 26 episode anime of this series as well. There is an English patch available for this game, but it's not necessary to play through this one. And besides, the patch is only somewhat finished, only the dialogue is translated. But from what I can tell, the story here follows a guy named Shintaro, who is stranded on a deserted island full of talking animals, and he has no idea who he is or how he got there. And of course, he's being chased by all sorts of bad guys because he has access to some kind of treasure or something. You get three lives and unlimited continues to get through ten levels laid out on a world map, split up into four stages each. And you have a really forgiving life bar, since each life contains, well, four life bars, pretty much. I should mention that there is a password system here represented in these pictures and some hiragana characters, so uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated. To get to the password prompt, you go to the middle island on the world map here, and just so you know, the island on the right is just an options menu to switch your sound between mono and stereo. You press B to jump, Y to punch, A unleashes a powerful Hadouken attack, L and R slide in each direction, and you can use them in mid-air for a downward kick. The controls and hit detection here are really well done, and the latter is especially important in a game where you have to get really close to enemies to do any damage. It's easy to take cheap hits in games like this, but I didn't have too many instances of that, thankfully. Throughout each level you find other characters that can help you progress through the game, like this fish woman who gets you across these spikes, or this frog dude who helps you leap out of this cave, or this eel you can ride. Punch him in the head and he fires a projectile, just like in real life. You also level up in this game, which is really cool. That's what the numbers represent after each enemy you defeat, so your attack gets stronger and your life bar gets even longer the more enemies you destroy. The graphics and music are also completely on point. This game looks fantastic, the jump is reliable and consistent, and the L and R buttons really help you out a lot. I don't even have any smart-ass comments or jokes to make. This is just a well-made game all around. Well, I guess the sound design is a little lacking. The punch sound is like someone gently shutting a car door, I guess. Yeah, take that, game. There is one big control flaw here that annoyed me. You know how normally in games like this, you press down and jump to drop down from one platform to another? That does not exist in this game. I don't know why, and it's not game-breaking or anything, but it's seriously annoying. Of course, since this game is based on a manga, there's plenty of weirdness here. You've got this pink bull wearing a velvet robe and a pearl necklace that breathes fire on you, or this bloated crying penguin wearing a diaper that you have to roll someplace, or these lips bouncing around. What, did Steven Tyler botch another surgery? Or this bird wearing a negligee? Jeez, I knew Sweet D was desperate to get famous, but this might be a bit over the top. One thing that people might get annoyed at with this game is with some of the boss fights. They're usually one-on-one -on -one battles with other character sprites that are about the same size as you, so it can get frustrating to even track these folks down and make contact, let alone do any damage. The levels themselves are pretty dang easy, but the boss fights can take forever, just because bosses are usually so small and quick. There's plenty of mini-bosses here too, and that's where you see the typical anime and video game bosses, like this thing that splits into two every time you hit it, or this lobster fellow here. So yeah, Nangoku Shonen Papua-kun is a total surprise. This is a pretty well-polished game. Yeah, it's got some annoyances here and there, but if I had to make a top 20 list of the best Super Famicom games to never leave Japan or get ported anywhere, this would definitely make that list. This series also produced a Game Boy game as well, but that's just a top-down single-screen puzzle game, totally different from the Super Famicom edition. But yeah, if you like what you see here, then this is another game you gotta play any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.